the Indian Penal Code was formulated in 1860. The Indian Evidence Act was formulated in 1882. The Criminal Procedure Code was formulated in 1898, amended in 1904, and then again amended in 1973. Each of the provisions of these three separate parts of criminal uh, code, of, of the criminal code, have been litigated upon and they are judgments which have settled the law on each of these provisions. Now that the government has brought a bill, in addition to what the standing committee must do, there must be a, a joint committee of parliament which must be constituted, consisting of uh, lawyers from all sides of the aisle, eminent legal minds, who need to apply themselves to each provision uh, which stood uh, before amendment and what the current bill proposes and what has been the judicial interpretation on each of these provisions because they, as I told you, have been settled over a period of time by judgments of various courts now going back almost a century if not more. So under those circumstances when you have decided to unsettle the criminal jurisprudence landscape, it needs to be very very carefully evaluated with a tooth comb. For example, uh, what I saw very perfunctorily in the, in, the, in the provision which deals with defamation, it says if you say anything even ironically, that is sarcastically, or you make a joke out of something, even that is going to be defamation. Now, when you have provisions like this, this obviously means that freedom of speech and expression has been tossed out of the window in this bill. That is why I am saying, and this is just one example, there are many other serious provisions of these bills which need to be looked at carefully. So, my demand would be that the Speaker of the Lok Sabha and the Vice President of India, who is the Chairperson of the Council of States, who is himself a lawyer, they must constitute a joint committee of parliament consisting of eminent legal minds from all parties in order to scrutinize each of these bills provision by provision juxtaposed against what the provisions were in the previous bill and what are the judicial pronouncements on each of these provisions. This is a very, very serious issue. It uh, involves uh, the life and liberty of uh, individuals which is enshrined in Article 21, which is enshrined in Article 22 of the Constitution. So therefore, under those uh, circumstances, each provision has to be looked at very carefully. Right? This cannot be subjected to hyperbole or rhetoric. And that's why I'm saying that a joint committee of parliament consisting of eminent legal minds, jurists must be constituted in the first instance to scrutinize each provision of the bill. And concurrently, outside the parliamentary process, uh, a, a civil society and eminent jurists, retired judges uh, who, who've uh, dealt with criminal law all their lives must also apply themselves to because these changes can turn out to be either transformational or completely pernicious and subversive of the fundamental liberties which are enshrined in the constitution. From breaking news, detailed analysis, in-depth interviews and explainers, follow the Times of India. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like our videos and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest.